Okay, here we go again with another video. How's it going, everybody? This is Pac-Man Jake, back again with a reaction video. Again, this is to KHTV, King Howie. Shout out to you if you're if you're watching this. Uh, King Howie came out with his most recent video on something that is a message that we, as Packer fans, need to hear, and that is to simply R E L A X. Simple as that, R E L A X. Especially after the not so stellar NFL draft that the Packers have had. Especially when it comes to picking Jordan Love and the drama surrounding Aaron Rodgers with the uh, picking of Jordan in the first round and where the Packers are heading in terms of where the organization wants to go and they want to move on from Aaron Rodgers and all of that. That would be the main headline out of everything announced in the media is Aaron Rodgers should demand a trade after the Packers picked Jordan Love, did him dirty, and they did him wrong on this. Well, here is King Howie giving us his his message to all of us at Packer Nation. What's cracking with you, Pack Nation? It's your man King Howie with, a, Howie with another video, KHTV. Shout out to all of the subscribers. Um, and let's get into this shit. This is a channel where we talk about the greatest football team in sports history, the Green Bay Packers. Um, a lot of uh, news coming out about the Packers picks. Everybody seems to be, you know, uh, really, really, really uh, using this whole scenario of Jordan Love and Aaron Rodgers as clickbait. It's understandable. I mean, here we go once again, another offseason where Aaron Rodgers is involved in some more, I wouldn't say turmoil, but I'll say some more drama. You know, um, a lot of uh, experts and mock draft analysts and network, sports network characters. Aaron Rodgers needs to be asked for a trade. He need, this is a slap in the face. <laughs> no, right. Pat McAfee with his, the, the, the Packers are trying to get rid of Aaron Rodgers with, with a sources, a beat writer who's been a beat writer for the for the Packers for four and a half years. For yeah, I think he's referring to Bob McGinn. He's uh, a supposed Packer insider that went in and shared his uh, whole thing on the Aaron Rodgers uh, getting, uh, possibly getting traded, that Matt LaFleur is tired of his act, which is why Jordan was picked by, by Brian and by Matt. So... That is something that has been very controversial. It really feels to me like another Tyler Dunn situation. Four years on Twitter, put his opinion out there and everybody think that's valid. When Brian Gutenkus and Matt LaFleur have stated that Aaron Rodgers is their guy. Now, are they just saying that to keep Packer fans happy or, you know, uh, not make Packer fans stress out, but this is what typical. This is what Packer. Yeah, I believe that there is a possibility that Brian and Matt could be saying that Aaron is their guy to put our our minds at ease, given the situation. But I think they're saying this and they're being honest. I think that they truly believe that Aaron is their guy right now at this juncture, but in the future, it's Jordan. And when you think about it, when Aaron was drafted, he was Ted Thompson's guy. He picked him. Brian picked Jordan. So the situation is like that, where Brett was walking into the situation with Ted as the general manager and Mike McCarthy as the head coach. Aaron is walking into the same situation where he has Matt, Fl Matt LaFleur, uh, where Matt has inherited Aaron, just like Mike and Ted inherited Brett. So I don't believe that any of those guys were trying to push either one of those guys out. They just wanted to move forward with the uh, the heir apparent, the future. They're 
guy for the future. That's what I truly believe. That's what uh, what Matt and Brian are thinking for Aaron, is that he's our guy right now. We can win with him. Laker fans typically do. We are a spoiled fan base. You know what I'm saying? You think about the last 10 years, Aaron Rodgers has been to the most NFC championship games out of any NFC quarterback in the league. He's been there more times than Russell Wilson, Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, uh, Cam Newton, you know, th those are the only quarterbacks I remember that um, ha have made it to the NFC Championship game. I mean, you could throw Jared Goff in there. You know something that didn't even cross my mind? I didn't even think about that up until I watched this for the uh, first time. I watched this video in advance, and then it kind of got me thinking. And then when Howie mentioned that, that Aaron Rodgers is the current quarterback the only current quarterback in the NFC that is playing that has been to the most NFC championships it just kind of it just didn't I didn't need that didn't even dawn on me I know that he's been there three times it was in 2010 2014 and 16 and then this past year in 2019 so that's four times that he's been to an NFC championship game I know that Russell has been there twice in uh in 2012 and 2014 there could have been I don't know if there were if he went if they went there at 13 I don't remember that but I know that Russell's been there twice Drew Brees I think has been there twice in uh, 2009 and 2018 when they took on Jared Goff's Rams and Jared has been there once uh, Cam Newton has been to an NFC championship once and that was back in 2015 when uh, Cam put on the Superman cape and was a uh, Superman and then got the uh, MVP award so that I didn't even think about that Aaron Rodgers I think has been arguably one of the best quarterbacks in the NFC with the Packers that just kind of just didn't really uh, I didn't really didn't really know that I found that kind of interesting if you want to but Aaron Rodgers has been there the most, which gives him the best odds to get back to the NFC Championship game. Now, some people might say, oh, I'm going with Brady and the Niners to uh, to, to battle it out in an NFC Championship game this year. We don't know that. We, we don't know that. Y'all didn't even have the Packers in the NFC Championship game last year. Y'all had the Saints. Y'all thought the Saints and the 49ers was going to play each other again. Oops, wrong. That is a very good point up brought right up there. A lot of people didn't even think, were always assuming that because we had a contender from last year that's going to assume that they were going to make the NFC Championship, the New Orleans Saints, a lot of people were thinking that, including myself, it didn't happen. I don't think anybody was thinking that the Packers or the 49ers, for that matter, who were picking second in the previous draft, that were going to be the team that was going to come out of the NFC. So... I think it's kind of interesting how people are going to assume that those are the teams. I mean, I think that includes myself, uh, because normally we just kind of project what we see in the now, and we probably we can probably see it into the future. But you, but well, we really don't know what's going to happen when it really does. The forty uh, the forty nine ers, I think, shocked us all. People probably just did not see them as good as they were because they were coming off of uh, coming off a of 4 and 12 season people didn't know how good their roster was people didn't know how how good they they were going to be on defense and then Nick Bosa coming in and taking the league by storm and nobody saw uh, us the Packers uh, coming off a losing record due to circumstances and have uh, having our uh, coach getting fired and then Matt LaFleur coming in with a fresh new offense, a new start. People were automatically thinking the Packers were going to be a maybe an 8-8 eight eight team or a 9-7 and seven team or getting back into the playoffs, but probably not to an NCAA championship game. Well, there was one guy that had us, had us going 13-3, and three, that was James Jones, so he nailed it. So you just never know who is going to make it to uh, eat to each conference's championship games. Most of them are vouching for Aaron Rodgers. You know what I'm saying? 
I just hate it when the media just come up come up with their assumptions and their opinions as trying to pass them on as valid facts when truthfully honest none of the shit that they giving us is facts like like somebody said um Aaron Rodgers is pissed off and um he's not happy has Aaron Rodgers came out and said he wasn't happy has he said he, he was pissed off has he said any of any of that where y'all getting your information from have any of you guys even talked to Aaron Rodgers I mean Y'all want Aaron Rodgers to do all of this? Aaron Rodgers, the, oh, the, y'all want all everything to be catered to Aaron Rodgers? Aaron Rodgers, uh, the team should have talked to Aaron Rodgers be, uh, and, and, and explained to them what they were doing in the draft. Aaron Rodgers is not a fucking GM. He's not. I know it's kind of silly when you think about it, how people are just assuming that Aaron is angry about this. We don't really know what Aaron was doing at this time when the Packers were were making the pick of Jordan Love. He probably just found out, probably not too shortly after it happened, we don't even know if he was actually watching the draft. He probably could have been out on the beach at his place in Malibu, probably reading a book or something. Or he could have been with uh, Danica, maybe having a, a glass of scotch and just talking and not having a care in the world about what the Packers were doing in the draft. We don't know that for sure. This is just an assumption. But we do not know for sure that he was angry. He probably could have been disappointed. This is just speculation. This is just what I'm thinking. And this is no different, the, what, what the people were saying, this is no different than from what I'm sharing as an opinion or just an assumption of what Aaron is thinking or feeling or doing at the very time when the Packers picked Jordan. We do know that Aaron was caught off guard. He was shocked per report, and he did talk to Brett about the situation. And then when he did talk to Brett, it created another another firestorm in where Brett was saying what he said about Aaron possibly going to play for a different team. And Brett was sharing his opinion on that, and all this blew up into another big drama fest. Like, I figured it would, given all of this uh, draft uh, aftermath stuff with picking Jordan, and then you just add more gas onto the fire. And that's what all of this really is, just adding more gas onto the fire and creating more drama. All of these draft grades, I think we got a D, I think we got an F. It's a, it's just, it's just, it's a, it's, draft grades don't mean anything. Draft grades don't mean shit. Oh, I give the uh, I give the Ravens a B. The Dolphins had the best draft this year. It's the Dolphins. They gotta go after the 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 beauty pageant guys. <laughs> beauty pageant guys. Okay, that was actually that was a good one right there. Yeah, I definitely agree with him that these draft grades by us as fans, analysts, they don't mean anything. They're just doing what. Uh, it's just all for the fun of it. I made uh, my draft ratings on the Packers draft picks for the fun of it. And it was just what I was thinking at the time when the Packers made the picks. And it doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't mean anything now. It sure may not, it sure as heck may not even mean anything seven years down the line if these guys turn out to be who they we think that they could be. And it's kind of interesting how people are not giving the Packers the benefit of the doubt on this one, as Jordan Love could turn out to be a great quarterback for us. And instead of giving the Packers the benefit of the doubt on going for a receiver that could ha- that, that they would like to project as being the number two guy for Aaron, why not give it to these other guys that we drafted? I mean, who we don't know for sure if we had picked, taken like a Michael Pittman or or a Denzel Mims, we don't know if he would have turned out to be the number two guy for Aaron and might not uh, might not even have been able to pan out. They gotta get him some help. He got help. He got a lot of help. Now, will there be some type of tension between Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers since everybody's saying this is Matt LaFleur's guy and this is a way for him to push Aaron Rodgers out of the building and 
you know, <laughs> at the beginning of the season, Aaron Rodgers stated that their relationship from what La Matt LaFleur told Aaron Rodgers is a partnership. You know what I'm saying? They just want to get the job done. The ultimate goal is winning the Super Bowl. And it's pretty pointless for these two to be bickering and fighting with each other over a draft pick when the main goal and the main focus is winning the damn Super Bowl. So why are we, you know what I'm saying, jumping to conclusions and overreacting over a guy that's not even going to start yet? He doesn't help the team now. We need help now. All we needed to do was just reload, reload the team and get some guys to fill in the spots that, you know, we need guys at the most. We got plenty of receivers. We got plenty of tight ends. We're probably going to get some more undrafted guys to come in there and put pressure on the, the, the dudes that have been there. What's the point of wasting a, wasting money on a receiver that got to learn and learn a system? This, this, plus, who knows if the system that these receivers was running at these colleges, who knows if the Green Bay system is going to fit that guy? We don't even know that. We don't know that. That is another good point. We don't know for sure that if Michael Pittman, Denzel Mims, Brandon Ayuk, Chase Claypool, or whichever receiver we could have gotten the second round, we don't know if that guy would be a a legitimate number two starter. We don't know because this rookie receiver is unproven. And I was, I like to go back to go back a few go back a few seconds and mention, yeah, we did grab some receivers. We got Devin Funchess in free agency, and we signed Daryl Stewart Jr an undrafted free agent, so there are some receivers, there is some help. A lot of people would be saying right now that the receivers we have now suck. Um, well, a lot of these guys here, that who we drafted in the past, Equinemia St. Brown, Marquez Veldez, Scantling, they could still work out. I would not sleep on Equinemia St. Brown possibly stepping up. Um, Alan Lazard, I don't know, there's probably a possibility he could step up. I... That's probably the whole thing with because the there's an uncertainty who is going to be the number two guy right behind Devontae Adams, which is why people ha had the reaction that they did, myself included, because there's the uncertainty who is going to step up to be the number two guy. Right now, we still don't really have that answer. I think that there is going to be somebody that somebody that is going to step up. I just you know just I don't understand why Aaron Rodgers got to get the most scrutiny out of all quarterbacks when you got a guy like Jamison Winston throwing 30 touchdowns. Shouldn't y'all be talking about that? Shouldn't y'all be talking about Matt Stafford getting paid all that money he made and, and, and not living up not living up to his hype? Shouldn't y'all be talking about Cam Newton getting a, a, another NFL job? But I get it. The guy is so damn good. This, this would really... This one really lets me know that Aaron Rodgers is good because the media cares so much. The media just cares so much. That's why I know Aaron Rodgers is a good quarterback. Even the dudes that hate on him, they know he's good because they go out of their way to try to shit on him any chance they get. This right here was the 100% dead on truth as to why Aaron Rodgers gets so much problems, grief, whatever you want to call it, from the media. It's because they know he's good. They know he's that good. And the reason why other quarterbacks don't get as much stuff from the media, like Jameis Winston, who did get some problems because he went, he threw 30 touchdown passes and 30 interceptions. He got a little bit of it. Cam Newton got a little bit of it as well. Matt Stafford hasn't gotten much because people are not going to pay attention to a quarterback on a losing football team, the Lions, and so they're just going to ignore that. What they want to prioritize is Aaron Rodgers, this guy that they, that, this guy that is on the pedestal, that they put on the pedestal when he was uh, starting to get it to the elite spot, and people talked him up in the media, talking about how great he is, 
which is true, which is true. But then there was a little bit too much credit given to Aaron. So you got that side of the media, the people that gave him too much credit when the Packers were winning. And then there were people that were on the other side, the ones that hate Aaron, and that gives him all the blame when the Packers lose. Now, those are the group of people that want to keep chipping at the uh, keep chipping at uh, the uh, the uh, the pedestal to, to see him fall. These people want to see him fall. People want to see Aaron fall off that pedestal. And we know he's that good because he's on the pedestal because he's up there. And the reason why they're not going after everybody else is because. They are not at the top. Some people would say that Tom Brady's up at the top, but they don't go after Brady like they do Aaron. They do give Brady problems because of the whole thing with uh, with the spy gate, deflate gate, and all that stuff. But they don't pers- make a personal attacks on on uh, Tom Brady like they do Aaron. Yeah, they go in. They will go into very personal details. They will go and they will chip at his character. They will chip at uh, why he doesn't talk to his family. They will go after. Uh, they will go after uh, his uh, personal demeanor. His. Uh, they will go. They will. They will go after. They will. They will critique anything on him. They will say that. You know, he's such a horrible leader, his body language sucks, and, you know, they don't do that for any other quarterback. We have actually seen some guys give off some bod- some bad body language at times when things are not going well for them. Even some of the best guys under the best composure can show, bo- can show bad body language. But you know what? They go after Aaron. They just go after him. You know, they say he's an awful teammate and you know he's just showing up the young receivers and he's just so he's he's got to be he's he's so uncoachable and all this stuff it's 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 they only do this to Aaron Rodgers and why they do it is because he's great and they want to see him fall off they want to see him go face down into the ground, broken nose and everything. They want to see him fall hard. They want to see him battered and bruised. And they will not stop until it happens. And that is just, you know, that's just fucked up. But this is the world we live in. This is the this is the madness that has been created around Aaron Rodgers. And this is what we have to live with, man. You know, so if we could just calm down for a bit, stop overreacting over the Green Bay Packers draft picks and and um, how y'all feel. This was a D, D grade. I give this draft class a D, a F, a F. <laughs> Where's the fucking support? Like, come on, man. If y'all call yourself Packer fans, y'all should be supporting the shit that no matter what we do, whether if it, if it's a it's a if it's a bad pick or not, you still gonna wake up on Sunday morning hoping the team wins, right? That right there, that right there, what he just said is the message that we all needed to hear. Is that you know. Instead of focusing on the negative of the draft, sure it didn't, sure things did not play out the way we hoped it would have, but at the end of the day, we will cheer on our football team. We will get past the draft. That things that you know, the things that that we thought could go and should have gone as well as we hoped, it just didn't. But at the end of the day, we are still going to rep our team. We are still going to cheer on for our team. And we should do what Howie said is still support this team through thick and thin. And that is something that I actually needed to hear 
totally. I needed to swallow my pride and just and just realize that it's time to stop complaining and stop focusing on the negative and just accept it, move on, and go and cheer for this team. Man, I know we should have... I know we should... I know everybody just waiting to say, I know we should have drafted a receiver. Don't y'all understand that majority of the teams that was in the um, playoffs ran the fucking football. 49ers ran the football. We ran the damn football. The Titans ran the damn football. Everybody was running the football. The Vikings were running the football. Saints ran the damn football until they let Drew beat until they gave the ball to Drew Brees. Like, so y'all just need to calm down, man, and let's see how this whole thing is gonna play out. That's uh, that's easily the the best part of it. We need all need to calm down. R e l a x. Simple as that. And he, he did bring up a good point about the playoff teams and running the football. And this is the big reason why we got A.J. Dillon. So that way we couldn't run the football. Let's run that football down teams' throats. Because I think running the football is very, very important. And I think it will be very important down the stretch. It's not, it's not, it's not going to hamper Aaron. It's going to help Aaron. A lot of people would say it's taking the ball out of Aaron's hands. Yeah, um, a little bit when when the when we're gonna run the football, but this is going to help Aaron. This is going to make a very balanced offense. You know what I'm saying? We we not GMs. We not scout. We not scout people. We just fans. That's all we are. We just fucking fans. And so far, we've been shitty fans at that. Last year, y'all praising praising Brian Guten because. Praising Matt LaFleur, and as soon as we get to the draft, fire Brian Gutenkus, fire Matt LaFleur, get him the fuck up out of here. Like, do y'all know how silly y'all sound saying that shit? That shit just makes no fucking sense at all. I mean, that's true. We are not general managers. We are fans. We are seeing this from a fan perspective. We really do not know things that the professionals do know. We can only trust what Brian Gutekunst and the front office is planning to do. When it's also kind of interesting, when the Smith brothers and Adrian Amos and were, was signed, people were praising Brian for those signings, and now all of a sudden, the draft comes around. We pick Jordan. The draft doesn't go as planned like we hoped it would have, and now all of a sudden. It's Fire Goody. Bring back Ted Thompson. Well, news flash for you guys, Ted Thompson is still working for the Packers. He's just not the general manager. So now everybody's calling for Brian's head. Everybody's calling for Matt's head. It's just kind of like a little bit bipolar much, overreacting much. Just relax. Everything will work out. At all. And excuse me for my cussing. Because I've just been watching all of you Packer fans on YouTube. And I'm just like, I'm just ashamed. I'm shocked. I'm disappointed in all of y'all. All of the Packer fans that was on here crying. Crying, upset, mad. Going through their emotional, their emotional, their emotional bullshit over a draft. I know a lot of people right now are probably really angry at what how he's had to say on this you know calling us uh crappy fans and whatnot and i actually can't disagree with him i think i mean we should be ashamed of ourselves for acting this way in terms of uh, of reacting to the draft and i understand we have the right to be disappointed i I, I totally get it, but this was very humbling to me, and Howie certainly helped me see it. You know, I'm actually kind of ashamed uh, reacting the way that I did, even though I was trying to be 
more positive about it. The ratings video I made, I really feel kind of mostly the same because some things just did not go the way maybe things could have gone for the Packers. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Brian and the front office see things differently, and I think that they are most likely going to be right. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt on this one. So, I'm going to be positive and upbeat going forward with this draft class. I'm really starting to warm up to all the draft picks that we've made. Every single one of them, including Vernon Scott. Heck, the Packers might see something that everybody else doesn't. And I probably gave that a really, really bad rating, and it was a, a half a star. Uh, I now disagree with that. Um, so I definitely got to give... Uh, I gotta give a huge thank you to Howie for helping me see this, and hopefully he helped everybody else who was watching this as Packer fans see this and just realize that it's it's all fine, it's all good. I know that thing. I, I I'm positive that things are going to work out despite some of the shortcomings, like the things that we didn't we we didn't really fix the defense, but I think with uh some of the uh, signings that we made in free agency will help out, like Christian Kirksey. Uh, there is a plan, and I believe there, there are plenty of moves that can be made going forward. So I'm optimistic at the Packers, and this team is going to be just fine. I believe it, and hopefully you believe it too.